about a year and a half ago, I lived by the sea. I had nearly all my life. As the daughter of a naval officer, the ocean was a constant friend throughout my childhood. I loved the sea, and I felt that it loved me back. Then, one day, while looking out to the exact point where the sky meets the water, I realized that I needed to say goodbye. This life was what I'd always known, and it reflected how I felt. I was afraid of risk, so much so that I was more willing to keep my current job, not because it suited me, but because it was comfortable. I also knew that I had allowed a very bad habit into my life, and that was giving my mind permission to criticize everything I did, only seeing where I had failed, where I could have done better, where I hadn't loved enough. And so I began to wander, and after many failed attempts at rebuilding, I found my new home, far from the sea, enveloped by endless mountains and trees. I didn't feel any different, and it was humbling to realize that you can't escape who you are, no matter how you distance yourself. After years of searching, I accepted that happiness isn't a place on earth. I had to start with my own mind, which insisted on chastising every single thing I did. I had to stop believing that what I wanted was unattainable and dare to see worth in who I am just as I am and that maybe what I want isn't what will make me happy. As I stopped trying to write my future exactly as I envisioned it, my life became more meaningful, but not easier than I thought it could be. After years of living in cities surrounded by people, I found love in a rural town, which was the last thing I expected, and taught me how, with patience and faith, things can work out. A new swell of creativity came over me by working to live instead of vice versa, accepting a smaller salary in exchange for the beauty of my home. My fantasies, I realized, had to compromise, and I needed to embrace opportunities that were right in front of me instead of the ones I wished were there. I got a job that offered stability, even though my ideal type of work was far from it. Surprisingly, it was just what I needed to teach me that one of our missions in life is to give, and by giving my time to my community as a teacher, I was filling a void that always doubted that I, as one person, could make a difference as you can too. This week I had an awful cold and spent much of it in bed, but I did try to motivate myself to tidy up a bit in preparation for winter and air out my woolens. The transition between seasons made me start to reminisce about this year and how wonderful it has been to share some of it with you. I've learned so much about myself, and I encourage you to be proud of what you've accomplished in your life, and yet humbled by what there is still to learn. Wherever you are, wherever you live, you can begin cultivating a mind that is enriching instead of diminishing. Where do you focus your energy? If you're at all like me and have a tendency to see your flaws over your strengths, I encourage you to cultivate a gentleness of spirit that will guide you towards your inner light. Hold on to it and dare to be proud of who you are in a world where we might be made to feel ashamed of ourselves and where we come from. <laughs>